بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dear students of Pharmaceutics 2 course PT 404 Here I am I am Professor Dr. Mona Abulainil This is my office hours and where my office is and this is my email You can use this email for easy communication between us If you have any question you can send it via email these are reference textbooks and recommended ones for our course. Let's start our lecture. As we said in the last lecture, the four main types of semi-solid dosage forms. Creams, ointments, gels, and pastes. Last lecture, we completed creams. And this lecture, we will start discussing ointments. Discuss definition of ointments, types and uses of ointments, their advantages and disadvantages. Then we will discuss formulation of ointments and preparation of ointments. Let's start ointments. Ointments, as we say, all the semi-solid dosage forms we are talking about in our course are semi-solid dosage forms intended for topical use. The characteristic of uh, ointments, the characteristic composition of ointments is that they contain high lipid percentage, more than half their weight is lipids. So more than 50% of ointment weight is lipids. They may contain water. If they contain water, its ratio does not exceed 20% of the ointment bees weight. So they may contain 0 to 20% water. And if they contain powdered drugs, the ratio does not exceed 50%. So this is the characteristic structure of ointment, the characteristic composition of ointment. More than 50% lipids, 0 to 20% water, and less than 50% powder drugs. This is as follows. More than 50% lipids, at least 50% of the weight of ointment is lipids. Water, if it is found, it will be in concentration less than 20% of total weight of the ointment. And powdered drugs, if they are found, their percentage will not exceed 50%. This is what ointments are. So, what are the types and uses of ointments? Ointments may be non-medicated ointments. This means they contain no drug. So the other type is medicated ointments. These are ointments containing drugs. Non-medicated ointments are also called ointment bases. Non-medicated ointments may be composed of only oleogenous substance, completely oleogenous substance, 100% of the composition of the ointment is oleogenous substance, or they may contain some water. The chart, this water does not exceed 20% because we are talking about an ointment. But no drug is found in these non-medicated ointments or ointment bases. The medicated ointments are nothing but an ointment base with the drug. Due to the high oleogenous percentage in the non-medicated ointment, they may be used as emollients, as we said before, and lubricants. What are lubricants? Lubricants are substances used to decrease friction. So due to the high percentage of oleogenous substance in ointment bases, they may be used to decrease friction and used as lubricants. Medicated ointments are 
base ointment bases, but you add a drug to them. So medicated ointments are either oleaginous uh, ointment base with drug or ointment base with some water and some Uh, old books classifies ointments according to how deep or how far can incorporated drugs reach in the skin. They classify ointments according to the site where the drug in the ointment can reach in the skin. But this is slightly old classification. If this is the skin, and we apply our dosage form, which is ointment. As we said before, the first step, the drug will be released from the ointment base. Then the drug should or may penetrate through the skin layers. If the drug does not penetrate through skin layers and stay on the surface of the skin, this is said to be epidermic ointment. So epidermic ointment is that ointment contains a drug that stays at the surface of the skin and does not permit any layer of the skin. If the applied ointment has a drug that when released, it can go through the skin, reaching the dermis layer, but not far than the dermis layer. Like the dermis layer we off. This is called endodermic ointment. And with the incorporated drug in the ointment, when released, can go deeply in the skin and reach the deep layer of the skin. This ointment is called diadermic ointment. So the old classification or, or the old types of ointments depends on how far can the incorporated drugs reach in the skin and this classifies uh, ointments into epidermic ointment, endodermic ointment and diadermic ointments. So we now finish definition of ointments, types and uses of ointments. Discuss advantages and disadvantages of ointments. First of all, advantages and disadvantages of ointments all depend on the high oleaginous percentage in ointments. Ointments have high percentage of oleaginous agents. Advantages of ointments, they are easily spread because they are semi-solid dosage forms. They are retained on the skin due to high viscosity and high viscosity is given by the high percentage of oleaginous substances in uh, the ointment or fatty substances in the ointment. They have lubricating effect and emollient effect due to presence of high percent of fats. Also high percent of fats gives the ointment uh, their disadvantages. They make them greasy, midahnin, difficult to remove, cannot be washed with water, and they make either the drug release is poor or the drug absorption is poor. So drugs incorporated in an ointment, when you put a drug in an ointment, does it work? Either the release of this drug will be poor or its penetration through the skin layers will be poor. How comes? In other words, why do ointments have poor drug release or poor drug absorption. Let's remember what happens to the drug when a, a semi-solid dosage form is applied to the skin. First step, the drug will release 
from the semi-solid does it fall as we said before to be topically available and drug release is affected by water solubility of of the drug because the environment on the skin is hydrous in nature this is what makes the skin hydrous in nature so if the drug is highly water soluble drug release will be more easy then drug penetration takes place the drug crosses the stratum corium and enters skin layers this is called drug penetration and it may result in drug absorption drug penetration and hence absorption depends on the ability of the drug to cross the stratum corium which is the main barrier layer as we said before so it depends on the solubility of the drug in stratum corium which is fatty in nature now what if we have a, a hydrophilic drug this hydrophilic drug will have taban high solubility in water so drug release is good but hydrophilic drug have low solubility in stratum corneum because stratum corneum is fatty in nature low solubility in stratum corneum will result in decrease in drug penetration so this drug has poor drug penetration and poor drug absorption so if the incorporated drug in ointment is hydrophilic the drug release is good but drug absorption is poor if the incorporated drug is hydrophobic the drug release will be poor or good hydrophil lipophilic drug or hydrophobic drugs have low water solubility so although they can across the stratum corneum due to their lipid solubility high solubility in stratum corneum will make this drug of good penetration and good absorption but the low solubility in water makes the release poor release so if you incorporate a lipophilic drug in ointment base although the drug absorption is good but the drug release is poor and this is why do ointments have either poor drug release or poor drug absorption here we come to formulation of ointments uh, if you are if you are asked to design an ointment what should you do formulate an ointment keep in mind that this dosage form is formed of a base and a drug incorporated in it so to formulate uh, a, a good ointment you should control the quality of the base to choose suitable base one should know types of ointment bases and factors affecting the choice of the base are of any ointment bases in handy وبختارها على اساس ايه بختار منها الوحده المناسبه على اساس ايه there are main types of ointment bases they are classified according to their hydrophilicity hydrophilicity of ointment bases means how does they accept water and this is expressed by a constant for each base called as the water number what is the water number if you have 100 gram of the base and you add water gradually in small portions to this base the first small portion when added and levigated mixed well with the base it is incorporated in the base it's taken with the base no separation takes place the base still one phase and you cannot notice that the base is a layer and water is another layer no they are both one layer they are homogeneous when you add another small portion of water and mix the base can 
take this water and this water can be incorporated in this base and no separation takes place. Again, you add some water, it's taken by the base. You add some water, it's taken by the base. Till you add some water which is not taken by the base. What's meant by not taken by the base? It cannot be mixed with the base. They form two layers. The separation of water from the base. يتفصلوا تلاقي الوتر اللي انت حاططها البيز مش قادرة تاخدها هذا وتر زي ما هي كده and the amount of water or the weight of water that can be taken by 100 gram base is called the water number so the high water number of the base means that this base can take much water this means that, be, that this base is more hydrophilic Low water number means that this base is less hydrophilic. So these are the four types of ointment bases arranged according to decreased lipophilicity and increased hydrophilicity. Oleaginous base, absorption base, water miscible base, and water soluble base. They are arranged according to increased hydrophilicity and decreased hydrophobicity. The more hydrophilic is water soluble and the more hydrophobic is the oleaginous base. Let's start discussing these types of ointment bases. These ointment bases, for each ointment base, we will discuss four main things first the water behavior of the base what's water behavior water behavior is divided into two main items during preparation of the base how much water do i incorporate in the base how much water do i add to the base during preparation and the second item the absolute ability of the base to take water Okay. Oleaginous base during preparation they contain no water. I do not add any water to oleaginous base during preparation. They are non aqueous base and they are formed 100% of fats and 0% water. But they can hold water only up to 5% of their weight. So the, uh, the water number of oleaginous bases at the A, the water number of oleaginous bases is only five. This is small water number. So oleaginous bases are the, le the, less, the least hydrophilic bases among the different ointment bases. Advantages of oleaginous bases, they are chemically inert, of course, because they do not contain water. They are of excellent retention due to high viscosity. They do not dry out because they do not contain water. And they have emollient and occlusive effects. Their disadvantages are, of course, they are difficult to be removed, so they are not applicable to hairy parts and not applicable to areas with exudates. Before we go to examples of oleaginous, I want to discuss a very important issue with you. This is how to characterize lipids. Oleaginous bases are formed mainly of lipids. There is no water, only lipids. How to characterize lipids? Lipids are formed due to esterification reaction between fatty acid and fatty alcohol. Esterification takes place and water is removed and the lipid is formed. Look at this lipid molecule. 
it contains many functional groups that are of special importance. First, the carboxylic group. The number of proportion of carboxylic groups to the molecule of the lipid is very important and it is expressed by a constant which is called acid value. Acid value expresses the proportion of carboxylic group to the uh, molecule. How many carboxylic groups are found in the molecule of lipid? Acid value is very important because it affects the irritability of the lipid. More acid value of the lipid means this lipid or this fat is more irritant to the skin. So we prefer to use fats of low acid value. The second constant depends on the hydrogen bond. Hydrogen bonds, double bonds, are uh, expressed by iodine value. Double bonds affect the stability of the lipid. If the double bonds number is high, so this lipid is liable for rancidity because this double bond can be broken by oxygen and the lipid is oxidized and rinsed. Double bonds, as double bonds are expressed by iodine value, so high iodine value of the fat means high number of double bonds and high liability of the fat for oxidation and rancidity. So we prefer to use fats or lipids with low iodine value. Other function groups are ester bond, and um, it is expressed by saponification value, and hydroxyl group, which is uh, expressed by hydroxyl value and ester uh, bond and hydroxyl bond or saponification value and hydroxyl value are not of great importance to us in semi-solids. We just consider acid value, which show us how irritable, how irritating will be the lipid and the iodine value, which shows us how stable will be the lipid. And as we said, we need to choose to choose a lipid with low acid value and low iodine value. Now we can go to subdivision of oleogenous ointment bases. There are different types um, of uh, oleogenous ointment bases. They are classified according to their origin. origin. Oleogenous ointment bases are classified into petroleum derivatives, animal fats, and synthetic polymers. Derivatives are mainly saturated hydrocarbons. And as you know, hydrocarbons, that they are, their molecules is composed of only hydrogen and carbon, only. They are saturated. This means that they do not contain double bond. No double bond is found in petroleum derivatives. This means that their iodine value is small and their stability is high. So they are of high stability and this is an advantageous uh, characteristic because they are composed of saturated hydrocarbons. Actually, petroleum derivatives have different molecular weights because they are, their molecules have different chain length, different number of carbon atoms. The number of carbon atoms per molecule uh, affects the physical state of the petroleum derivative. We found that petroleum derivatives of less than 15 carbon atoms per molecule are liquids. Those which carbon atom per molecule is 15 to 25 are soft solids. And those where the number of carbon atoms 
their molecule is between 25 and 40 are solids in nature. These different natures of the petroleum derivatives is an advantage also because you can use different proportions of liquids to solids and soft solids to control the viscosity of the oleogenous base. So petroleum derivatives has no, have no have two advantages. First, they are saturated hydrocarbons, so they are uh, not liable for oxidation and rancidity. Second, they have different chain lengths. They are found in different physical uh, forms, liquids, soft solids, or solids. So we can control the viscosity of the prepared ointment base. Liquid petroleum derivatives is liquid paraffin, which is also called mineral oil. Liquid paraffin, when incorporated in an ointment base, it exerts two action. First, liquid paraffin controls the viscosity of the base. Increase of the incorporated liquid paraffin will result in decreasing the viscosity of the base because liquid paraffin is a liquid. The other rule liquid paraffin plays in ointment base is that it is a levigating agent. What is levigating agent? We know that levigation is wet grinding. So if you have a coarse powder drug and you want to incorporate it into the ointment, use liquid paraffin as part of the oleaginous base of the ointment. But do not add liquid paraffin to the base. First, levigate the drug with liquid paraffin, then add them together to the base. And this is the use of liquid paraffin as navigating agent. Soft solids of petroleum derivatives um, are exemplified by soft paraffin, which is also, also called Vaseline or petrolatum or petrolatum jelly. And as we said before, please, memorize all these uh, different names of the same substance. Soft paraffin is found in two grades, yellow soft paraffin and white soft paraffin. What's the difference between them? Naturally occurring soft paraffin is yellow in color, but sometimes we bleach this yellow soft paraffin, we add a bleaching agent to remove this yellow color and prepare the white soft paraffin. As we see, the white soft paraffin is of good appearance. It's white, shiny, of good appearance, while yellow soft paraffin is of dull appearance. However, they, are, they have different uses. We do not use white soft paraffin in preparation of all types of ointments. White soft paraffin, and due to its good appearance, is preferred in cosmetic preparation and some pharmaceutical ointments, but not those ointments intended to be applied to the eye or to irritated areas. Ointments intended to be applied to the eye are called ophthalmic ointments. So ophthalmic ointments are eye ointments. In ophthalmic ointments, and can, I cannot use white soft paraffin because it contains traces of the bleaching agent and it is very irritating to the eye. So although white soft paraffin is of good appearance, but in ophthalmic ointments, we use yellow soft paraffin to avoid the irritating effect of traces of reaching substance that is found in white soft paraffin. زي ما حضراتكم شايفين اليلو سوفت بارافين ده ربنا خلقه كده بس شكله مش كويس فعملوا له بليتشنج شالوا اللون بتاعه بيضوه وعملوه وايت سوفت بارافين 
الوايت سوفت بارافين شكله كويس بس فيه تريسز very small amounts من البليتشنج ايجنت والبليتشنج ايجنت ده very irritating يبقى ما اقدرش احطه في العين I cannot use it for ophthalmic ointment to prepare ophthalmic ointment of a base composed of petroleum derivative use yellow soft paraffin تمام This is the difference between yellow soft paraffin and white soft paraffin and the difference in their uses. Solid petroleum derivatives is exemplified or is um, uh, subdivided into two categories, those of straight chain and those of branched chain. Those of straight chain are exemplified by hard paraffin which is also called paraffin wax. And again, hard paraffin is found in two categories, yellow hard paraffin and white hard paraffin, as we said before for soft paraffin. The difference between them and use of each other, of each of them, is the same as we said for soft paraffin. The other type of solid petroleum derivatives is the branched chain derivatives this is exemplified by a substance called microcrystalline wax this is about derivatives or different types of petroleum derivatives let's say that petroleum derivatives are used as mixtures and we know why to control viscosity add more solids to increase the viscosity and more liquids to decrease the viscosity. The example of petroleum derivatives in, uh, as ointment base is simple ointment. Simple ointment is mentioned in the USP, the United States Pharmacopeia. Simple ointment is composed of hard paraffin, 5%, and soft paraffin, 95%. We are not asked to memorize these ratios. Just know, you are, you are asked just to know that simple ointment is formed of hard paraffin and soft paraffin. So, here I can ask you a question. Do you think the viscosity of hard paraffin is more or less the viscosity of more than or less than the viscosity of simple ointment? Hard paraffin alone has a viscosity. When I add soft paraffin to it to form simple ointment, of course, I decrease its viscosity. Also, simple ointment is more viscous than soft paraffin. Soft paraffin alone has certain viscosity. When I add hard paraffin to it, it's hard paraffin. It's a solid, so it increases the viscosity. This is simple ointment. What is white ointment? Simply, it is simple ointment, but prepared using white hard paraffin and white soft paraffin. This is an example of petroleum derivatives when used as ointment base. Animal fats is another type of oleaginous ointment base. Animal fats are mainly lard. Lard means pig fat. Duhn al khanzir. Lard contains high percentage of unsaturated fats. Unsaturated fats means many, many, many double bonds. So the iodine value of lard is high because of the high percentage of unsaturated fats the high percentage of double bonds and this makes reliability of rancidity high so lard is of high iodine value and high liability for rancidity and for this reason lard is no more used as ointment base 
The other type of oleaginous ointment bases is synthetic. Synthetic polymers are also called silicones or siloxene. They, they are exemplified by dimethicone, which is dimethyl siloxene. They are polymers of silicon with oxygen, carbon, and hydrogen. They are totally synthetic, so they are inert. There is uh, no water incorporated in them, so they are inert, and they are not susceptible for microbial growth. They do not allow microbial growth because they are not of natural origin. They are synthetic. So here we discussed the oleaginous ointment bases. Let's discuss absorbent ointment bases. Again, we will start with the water behavior. In absorption ointment bases, do I add water during preparation of the base? Sometimes we add water and sometimes not. So absorption ointment bases may be non-aqueous or aqueous. But of course, if we add water, this water does not, does not exceed 20% of the total weight of the base because we are talking about ointments. Absorption bases have high water number. They can hold water up to 30 to 70% of their weight. But actually, I add water 20%, only 20% of its weight to prepare ointment. Advantages of absorption bases high water absorption capacity, they are of good spreading. And emollient effect, they have emollient effect because they still contain relatively high percentage of fats and they have some occlusive effect. They have some occlusive effect. Disadvantage of absorption bases, they are difficult to be removed due to the high percentage of fat still found in them. And they are not applicable to hairy parts and areas with exudates. There is a very important thing to take care about. Absorption bases, why do we call them absorption bases? Call them absorption bases because they increase the drug absorption through the skin? No, absorption bases have nothing to do to drug absorption through the skin. We just call them absorption bases because they can absorb large amount of water. The water number is relatively high. So the, we call them absorption bases because they can absorb water, not because they increase the absorption of the drug through the skin. Absorption ointment bases either contain no water, as we said before, or contain some water which does not exceed 20% of the base weight. Absorption ointment bases that contains no water are non-aqueous, and they are called anhydrous absorption base or non-emulsifying absorption base. Those containing some water are called aqueous. They are water in oil emulsion base. They form water in oil emulsion. Now, where is the emulsifying agent? Emulsifying agent is added to the anhydrous absorption base. And when we add water to anhydrous absorption base, water in oil emulsion is formed and water in oil emulsion base is formed. The main composition of ointment base, of absorption ointment base, is oleaginous substance, and of course, 
this oleaginous substance is added to control viscosity of the base. Lipophilic emulsifier and water, they may contain water if they are hydrous or they do not con may, may not contain water if they are anhydrous. As we said, oleaginous substance is added to control viscosity of the base and lipophilic emulsifier is added to form water in oil emulsion when water is added. Examples of lipophilic emulsifier is fatty alcohols, beeswax, and lanoli. Take care. Water in oil emulsion absorption base are simple oleaginous substance, lipophilic emulsifier, and water. This lipophilic emulsifier makes water in oil emulsion, forming the water in oil emulsion absorption base. Anhydrous absorption base is very tricky. They are not only contain oleaginous substance, but with oleaginous substance, they contain lipophilic emulsifier, but no water. If anhydrous absorption ointment base are formed of oleaginous substance and lipophilic emulsifier. So if water is found, it can absorb high amount of water, and that's why they can absorb high amount of water and why they are called absorption ointment base. The thing that makes them absorb high amount of water is the presence of lipophilic emulsifier that forms an water in oil emulsion. Example of lipophilic emulsifier found in absorption ointment bases are fatty alcohols, beeswax, and lanoline. An important lipophilic emulsifier is lanoline. Lanoline is also called wool fat, wool wax, or adepslany. Because it's taken from the wool, cheap wool. Lanoline is found in nature as anhydrous lanoline, but it's used as hydrous lanoline containing 30% water. Why cannot we use anhydrous lanoline in preparation of absorption ointment base because it is very sticky. It's a sticky material. You will see it in the videos of the uh, lab um, uh, uh, lessons, of the practical lessons. Anhydrous lanoline is very sticky. To overcome this Disadvantage, add some water to anhydrous lanoline to form hydrous lanoline containing 30% its weight water. Example of absorption ointment bases is what's called hydrophilic petrolatum bases. It is petrolatum bases containing white wax and white petrolatum, but it is hydrophilic due to the presence of cholesterol and the sterile alcohol, which are emulsifiers that form water in oil. Just to add water to this base, water in oil emulsion is formed. So cholesterol and the sterile alcohol are the emulsifiers, and white wax and white petrolatum are viscosity controllers. They are petroleum base, petrolatum base, and they are used for viscosity controller. By the end of this lecture, you are supposed to be able to define ointments, differentiate between creams and ointments, enumerate different types and uses, advantages and disadvantages of ointments, design an ointment, predict a suitable base for an ointment, and finally differentiate between different types of ointment bases. Uh, Actually, you can differentiate between oleaginous ointment bases and absorption ointment bases. 
other types of ointment bases will be discussed next lecture, insha'Allah.